Hello, hello, everyone, and welcome. Uh, what we currently have over here is a hot mess because I filmed my floss tube before work this morning. So, if you give me a few minutes to get everything back in its bags, or at least back with its proper things. I was going to diamond paint, but apparently you guys want a live cross-stitch tutorial. So we'll cover some of the basics of the cross-stitch and hopefully get some more of you guys converted over to the dark side. So you know I'm all about that. All right. Everything's back in the bag, I think. I have stuff everywhere. I have been trying literally all day to get my cross uh, to get my floss tube uploaded, and my phone is not cooperating. So let's see who we've got here today. Switch over to my correct chat. Hi, hey, Robert. Hello, Mayhem. Rivka, good morning. There's Dearly Crafted. Hello, Jamie. Robin. Welcome everybody. How is everyone doing today? Yeah, it's hard to type on the iPad. I, I have found that out for sure. Okay, so hello, Terry Lynn. There's Odd But Nice. You already cross-stitched before diamond painting. Fair enough. I've got to cut all of the little extra bits off the edges of that one. And then of course, this is my bucket of new stuff that I buy. So I put it all in a bucket when I get it. And then I, once I have it on the floss tube, then I can put it away. Um, I dumped it out on the floor a minute ago. So. <laughs> hey, Mallory, welcome. And just so you know, Mallory, I'm actually Marissa. And Marissa is, um, oh, somebody help me. What's her channel name? I'm totally blanking on it. Oh, Marissa, Maritza is someone else. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Hello, Crashly. Welcome. All right. This is the one with the needles in it. So that's the one that I need. Okay. So Crashly really wanted this. A couple of other people stated that they would like this. Hello, Carla, including a not today, Satan. Yeah, that's a good one. That is a good one to have. Um, all right, so there was a question. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to let you guys ask your cross-stitch questions today. Oh, no problem, Mallory. It's fine. It's okay because they're very similar and not everybody says them correctly. So it is all right. Okay, so Crashly had asked about needles. So Rebecca was cross-stitching in her live just before mine. And Crashly was asking about needles. So Crashly, I have two different sets of needles. So I have some tapestry needles, which are size 18 to size 22. They're blunt ended. And these are for um, pearl cotton, tapestry wool, and Medici's wool and soft cotton. Okay. So these are bigger than these here. You can see the size difference, right? So no, you do not need tapestry. Tapestry is for like if you're doing plastic canvas or like if you could use these for an 11 count fabric, like really small fabric, a nine count fabric, you could use these, but that's all you can really use those for. I use these for um, my uh, plastic canvas that I was doing. That's what those were for. These are size 26 needles. These have a sharp tip on them. These are embroidery needles. I like mine with a sharp pointy tip. Uh, some people prefer theirs blunt. You can get both. So you need either a 24 or a 26. 24 is good for 11 or for 14 and 16 count. 26 is good for um, 18 and 22 count, and then you're going to go up to 28 for the higher counts, counts higher than that. 
Do they have a big threading hole? That was also a pain in your butt. So what you can do, what I did, if I can remember where they are, is I bought a needle threader. In fact, I bought a whole bag of needle threader. Needle threaders. So I got these metal ones because they last longer. And this is just one kind. There's several different kinds of needle threaders, but these are the kind that I liked. So they have a small end here, and then they have a bigger end there. Okay. So I bought one of these. I got a bag of 50, and I think it was like three bucks off of Amazon of these. You can find them in the store, all of that kind of stuff. Yeah, those ones that just have that little piece of wire, those are crap. You're not going to do well with those. You're always going to have issues because they're so thin that that wire won't hold up. Okay. So then what you're going to do to get your thread into your needle. Hello, everyone. If I miss you coming in, I apologize. We're doing a impromptu live cross stitch question and answer session. So what you're going to do is you take your needle and then you take your floss on the small end because that's the end that will fit in the eye of my needle and you just hook it over. Okay. So it's just hooked over, right? That's what you're going to do. So you're going to insert it and there's no way for me to get really any closer. Hold on. I'm going to drop you down. Ooh, that's as low as I can get you, okay? So, I have put my needle threader into my needle, the eyelet, the eye of my needle. You put your floss over, and you pull it through. That's the easy way. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Okay? <laughs> now, let's not get dirty, you guys. You know I don't like that on my channel. So, that's the easy way to do it. So, like I said, I bought a, a whole bunch of these. Normally, what I do, honestly, is I take the two ends and I stick them in my mouth and get them wet and put them through the needle. But if I'm tired and I'm having trouble, I'll use one of these and just pull it through just like I did. Okay, so that's literally how easy it is. So get you some of those. Those are the good ones. And even these will break, which is why I got 50 of them. And then I can also have enough to put one in every single project. Okay, so there's that. Yes, wire threaders suck. They do. So go with those. Those are the easy ones to use, at least in my opinion. All right. Now. Where did I get them? I got them off of Amazon. And if I'm not mistaken, Crashly, I believe that I have it down in my um, floss tubes. I'm pretty sure I have it down in the um, description with all the stuff, the tools and stuff down at the bottom. Okay. So that's the easy way to do that. If you have problems seeing it, that's a super simple way to do it. All right. Now, I put my floss on bobbins. They do not come this way, unfortunately. So you can buy white bobbins. Look something like that. I use a Sharpie to write the DMC number. So the DMC numbers in cross stitch are the same as they are in diamond painting. It's all the same DMC numbers. You were talking about the camera ride zoom in. <laughs> yeah, on Amazon. Um, so I just buy these bobbins. I buy them by the hundreds. And these, um, this particular box came from Michael's and it actually came with 50 white bobbins in it. So the ones that are in here like this, I bought the box, the plastic box and the bobbins, a set of bobbins. And it was like three or four dollars at Michael's. Okay, 
Now, I like to put my cross stitch project, a picture of it in here so I know which one. And then on the inside of my lid, I tape my key because it's got my symbols on it, just like in diamond painting. Sorry guys, it's got the symbols on it and then it tells you the colors, okay? That's my personal preference. You don't have to do that, but for my big projects, that's what I like to do. For my smaller projects, that's not a good example. Uh, for my smaller projects, I just put them in a bag, okay? These bags came off of Amazon. I got a set of them. I think I got 10 in a set for like 7 or $8. They're really, they're really cheap. They're very good quality. And then I had gotten a different set that was different sizes. So I have some little bags. So what I like to do is this one's only got four colors in it, as you can see. This is, I'm just working off of this. I'm just pulling from that instead of bobbinating it. But I just pop them in there. There's my needle threader and there's an extra needle down in there. So I just keep them in little bags. If you ever had an Ipsy subscription, you know, the makeup, those little bags are great for this kind of stuff. Um, those little makeup bags, you can get them at Dollar Tree, all kinds of different things. But that's the way I sort mine. Now, if you want to get fancy and you have a floss holder, which is something I wanted, I made these. It's cotton batting and a fat quarter. And I cut it and we sewed it. You don't have to have those. It's just something a little bit extra. Okay? So, there's that. So that's the way that I keep my projects. All the floss is in there. The pattern is in there. And then I like to keep a cover page for my floss tube purposes so I know which pattern it is. Zip it up and I can put it in my bucket. Okay. Yeah, these are floss bobbins. They're flat. There are also sewing bobbins, which are different. Okay. Now, you can get a pattern in two different ways. Well, three different ways. Let's put it that way. You can get a kit, which looks like something like this. This is a kit. It's going to come with your floss. It's going to come with needles. This one happened to come with beads. It's going to have your pattern, and it's going to have either fabric or perforated paper in it, which is what this one has. This is perforated paper. Okay. So a lot of people like the kits because everything is there. You should have enough and you can just go right to it, right? So this is a kit. So that's one way that you can do that, okay? That's a lot of newbies, a lot of people new to cross-stitching. This is the one I was talking about, Crashly. Do you get one that looked like that? A needle threader that looked like that? Those suck. You get like maybe one or two uses and that's about it. So, um, yeah, those strings are tangled. They are, yes. A lot of times they're tied in a way that you can get them untangled fairly easily, but yes. Um, okay, so that's the first way that you can get a set of cross stitch stuff. I don't like the kits. Because I can't, I don't have enough control for myself, right? So what I prefer to get is I prefer to get a pattern and then buy the floss separately, okay? Now there's two different kinds of patterns you can get. You can get a pattern that is a hard copy. Hold please, where did my hard copies go? Which looks like this. Okay, it'll come a lot of times it'll come in a little bag or it'll be like a um, cardstock kind of thing. But you get a pattern that looks like this and it'll tell you on the back. So like this one tells you all the flap, uh, the floss that you need. It tells you what the model on the front was stitched on, it gives you um, a stitch count and it gives you how big your design is going to be and all that kind of stuff. We'll cover this more in a second. 
But this is the second way. So you can get a hard copy pattern from your local uh, needle workshop or your LNS, um, or you can um, order these online from some of the, the different stores and things like that. They'll send you an actual hard copy pattern. The third way that you can get a pattern is you can get a PDF pattern, which is, I really like PDF patterns because you get them immediately. So this one is a PDF pattern that I got. I got it off of Etsy and I just printed it out. And it also comes with everything that a hard copy pattern is going to have on it. Okay. So if we look down here at the bottom and I'm going to use this one because you can see it really well. This pattern is written to use DMC stranded cotton embroidery floss and classic color works, which is a different type of uh, floss. It's a different company, hand dyed cotton. So on this one, I'm using only DMC colors. These other ones are fancy flosses and I haven't got a stash of those. The model is stitched on 28 count even weave spooky hollow by fabric flare. So spooky hollow is the color fabric flare is the company that dyed it. OK, and we'll cover this here in just a second. The pattern is 100 by 98 stitches. When using 28 or 14 count fabric, this pattern will be completed 7.14 by 7 inches. OK, so that's how big it's going to be when it's finished. If you stitch it on 28 count or on 14 count. OK. Any questions about what I just covered? because I don't want to move too fast for those of you that, that are new. Those of you that are experienced, feel free to chip in and help me out because I'm doing this on the fly, which means I have no notes or anything like that. So I'm very likely to miss things. So let me come back up. I know I've missed a lot of people coming in. You guys, I think if I have a question that I need to answer, I'm going to greet everyone. Hello, Rebecca. I am doing the tutorial. Why not? Yeah, I'm not a kids person either, Rebecca. Hey, Sherry, welcome. No, not Siri, Sherry. Um, hello, Pippa, welcome. I'm not starting over, no. So when you buy a pattern, you can use what count Ada to use. Okay. So, you know how when I play games on my channel, Crashly, and I say the points don't really matter? The counts don't really matter in the long run, except how big or how small you want your fabric to be, or your pattern to be. So, now this one says they recommend, it's a recommendation of 28 or 14, okay? Now, 28 you would go over two squares and 14, you would go over one square. So that's why these are basically the same count, depending on how you stitch it. Don't freak out. I'll tell you more. Your basic counts are 14, 18, or 16, 18, 20, 22, 25, 28, 32, 36, 40. Okay. Those are the basic counts. Now, um, the higher number that you get, the smaller holes you are, because what that count means is that is how many holes there are per inch on that fabric. So let me show you. This is a 22 count Ada cloth. I'm going to focus it so you can see, hopefully. Yep, there we go. That means there's 22 holes per inch on the fabric. Okay? This is a 28 count linen. It looks like there's a whole lot more holes, right? <laughs> um, let's see. This is a 25 count right there. And then I also have, and this is what I recommend starting on, is a 14 count. 
okay? So 14 count is pretty easy to see. If you want to go more, if you want your holes to be bigger, you can start on an 11 count. You just have to have a huge piece of fabric if you're doing a big pattern. So there's your 14 in white versus your 22 count in tan. Do you see the difference? Right? Okay. So now let's talk about the difference in fabric. You have, you guys, my camera doesn't autofocus, so I'm going to have to keep sticking my hand up here and focusing it. All right, so let's talk about different fabrics. You have Ada, or Ida, as some people say it. Okay. It is fairly stiff. A lot of people like stitching on it. I like stitching on it because it's easy. You can see the holes really well. You don't really have to fight for it. This is what it looks like. I mean, super easy to see, right? That's a white Ada. You can see how, I mean, you can literally, there's no give to it. It's standing up on its own, right? <laughs> okay, so that's that one. When you start getting up into the higher counts of Ada, like this 22, your fabric is a little less stiff. So see, like I can bend this one. Now, granted, this one has been dyed. So it's gotten wet and it has been dried out. It's been ironed. So it's got some more give to it. It's still pretty stiff. It'll still crinkle if I hold it in my hand and bunch it up. But it's not a big deal. It is 100% cotton. This one, this particular one is 100% cotton. I don't know what the white is but usually an Ada is a cotton and poly blend. Okay. Hi, Diane. Welcome. Um, this is 100% cotton. And I know that because I purchased this because it was 100% cotton. Next, the most common thing that you're going to hear after Ada is going to be linen. Not saying everybody uses linen. A lot of people don't. Mayhem was super brave. She started on linen. Okay, so this is what a linen looks like. This is 28 count. This is the smallest count I think that you can get on a linen. So now when I'm stitching on linen, I'm not stitching into every single hole. I'm stitching into every other hole. Okay, so let me show you on this one because I'm stitching on this one. Ah. Everything's falling apart. All right, so I'm stitching on there. That's what linen looks like when it's stitched on. Now, I don't think I can get close enough for you to see, but that is over two holes. So I'm skipping a hole and going into the next one. But that's what that looks like. Okay. Uh-oh, don't send the frog over here. You, mm -mm, nope, don't send it to my house. No frog. And I'll tell you about the frog too. It does. I love, love, love the way that linen looks when it's finished. Um, this is the only thing I've stitched on linen so far. And I will eventually finish that. Like it's, I'm not that far from being done with it. I'm actually pretty close, which is why I got some more linen. So this linen is going to get cut up and it's going to be some of my Christmas patterns are going to be stitched on this. That was the purpose for buying those, okay? Next up, what you have, um, and what a lot of people like is what are called even weaves, okay? They're higher counts like linens, but they don't have, so like sometimes when you get linen, you can get what you call slubs. So if you look right there, you see how that space is wider? Like your threads aren't even in linen, especially especially if it's raw linen. So you get differences and that means your stitches are a little bit, can sometimes not be even, okay? So a lot of people like even weaves because it gives you the look of linen, but your threads stay nice and uh, even. So this is a Jobelin. And 
It is an even weave. This is a 28 count Joe Blend. So it's the same count as that linen. But do you see how much more densely it's packed, how much more densely it's woven than the linen? And everything is very even, just like the Ada. Okay. I mean, you can still see through it. So on this one, this is 28 count. I'm going to go over two when I stitch on this one. So I'm going to go into one hole, skip one, and go into the next one. You don't have to. Do you have to double your thread on all cross stitch? If so, do you always use the loop method or two individual strings when you put your needle in? I know my camera kind of does have glaucoma. I'm sorry. It doesn't, I can't figure out why, but it doesn't focus like it's supposed to. It has an auto focus on it. It just doesn't do it. So, sorry guys. Okay, the next kind of fabric is a Jobelin. No, it's a Lugana. So it is very similar to the Jobelin, basically, because they're the same thing from different companies. Okay. It's also very even. This is a 32 count. So you can see how much smaller the holes are. But it's an even weave, so everything is nice and even. Cool? Do you have any questions about fabric, Crashly? Or anybody? Questions about fabric? This is another linen, and this is a another 28 count linen. That's kind of where I'm comfortable working with linen right now. Okay. So you've got different kinds of flosses, right? So these are DMC flosses. They come on a skein like this. And there's 8.7 yards to a DMC skein. Okay. You can get hand dyed flosses. Which looks something like this. Same idea. They're just hand dyed. They're pretty. They're fancy right? I mean, is that not gorgeous? It's absolutely gorgeous, right? So you can get hand dyed flosses. Obviously, these cost more money than these do because all of the work that's been put into them. No, I said skein. S-K-E-I-N. Skein. <laughs> Don't be a salty heifer, Crashly. I'm doing this for your benefit. Okay. Let's see. Is this all fabric in here? Yes, that is all fabric. So let's pull out... Pull this piece out. This is a scrap piece. All right. So you asked about um, putting your floss into the fabric, right? So you have a skein of yarn or a skein. Some people say skein, but you have a skein of yarn and you have a skein of floss. Basically, it just means a chunk. Okay, let's see what color do I want to use. Something that will stand out. 
not be too bright. That's good blue. <laughs> Thanks. That is Red Heart Turqua. It's a fun color. Okay. Oh, Ashley, you did ask me about the pattern. So I can't show you the actual pattern, at least not the whole thing, because this is a purchase pattern. And that's very rude to the designer to do that. Okay. It's kind of like buying a cross stitch or buying a diamond painting from somebody on AliExpress that was done from Diamond Art Club. So it's going to give you a color key. A lot of times they'll tell you how many stitches you're going to need that color for. So you can guesstimate how many um, skeins of floss that you're going to need. And if, does anybody remember how many X's you can generally get out of a skein? Because I don't. And then your pattern is going to look something like that. Okay. It looks just like a cross stitch pattern. It has symbols for each color and all of that kind of stuff. And then any special stitching or anything, it will tell you down here. So this one says, vacancy is done in classic color works, licorice red. Bed and breakfast, rest in peace, door handle, spider, Z, bars on top of the building. The black cup handle is all done in classic color works, black coffee. So it gives you all of your special um, instructions there, okay? No, I was saying I can't show you the pattern because that's rude to the, no, it's not Yiddish. Calm yourself and focus. <laughs> okay, let's see. I missed a lot of people. Hello, Brittany. Welcome. Hey, Catherine. I'm sorry if I missed you when you came in. So we're going to take this piece of floss. Now, the length that you want your floss to be whoops, is going to depend on how comfortable. Yes, I can show free patterns. You're right. Hold on just a second. I have one of those. This is a freebie pattern from Hands On Design. Okay. It does the same thing. It gives you all of your flosses that you need. It tells you how big it's going to be. They did theirs on 32 count. And then it gives you your pattern. So you can see, maybe you can't because my camera. Let's try this again. Different symbols for different colors. Okay. Yeah, there's lots of, if you follow the hashtag Be Well and Stitch, there's a ton of freebies. Pretty much every company out there that does patterns also um, has freebies. Okay, so what we're going to do, yes, Pippa, thank you. It looks like a diamond painting black and white canvas. Yeah, and some of them you can get in color. Now, I prefer a long, this is about a yard long. So I put my arm all the way out, and then I come to my opposite shoulder. I would not recommend starting with a piece of floss that long. So when I started, I started about that long. I'd say that's about a ruler, so about 12 inches. That's completely up to you, but I started at about 12 inches. What's the difference between counted cross stitch and pictured or stamped or whatever? Exactly what it says. Counted cross stitch is what I showed you. You have to count. Um, stamped cross stitch has the picture stamped on it, kind of like your canvas for diamond painting, and then you just have to get the right colors over the X's. Okay. Hey, Valerie. 
Now, I personally do a loop start method. The way that you do a loop start method is you take your piece of floss and you fold it in half. You put the two ends together so that you're creating a loop on the other end. Okay? Then I'm going to put these two ends into my needle. I'm going to use my needle threader for the sake of time. Sorry. Okay. Just like that. And you want there to be a little bit of hangover so that you don't keep pulling your thread completely out of your, the eye of your needle. All right. So what I'm going to do, focus the camera again so you can actually see what I'm doing. I go in from the bottom and I will also show you how to come in from the top. Okay. Um, oh, talk about how the floss has strands. Thank you. When you take a piece off of your uh, skein or off of your bobbin, it's going to have six strands on it. These are six, six ply pieces of floss. Okay. You don't need all six unless you're doing like an 11 count. So I generally use one piece folded in half. So what you're going to do. If your end is together like this, the way, the easiest way to pull that off, so I take my finger and I just kind of tap the top and break, get those threads kind of like this, and you're going to grab one. If you don't use the method that I use, you can grab a different one. You can grab two or whatever. They're always six unless they tell you different. So you can just assume that they're six, okay? The easiest thing to do is to take one piece one strand and pull straight up. And you can see I'm letting this gather as, as I pull, pull up. I don't, I'm not squeezing my fingers. It's very lightly, just enough to keep that from coming up. And you pull it out. Okay. You're going to have something that looks like that left over, and that's fine. Yes, I will rename this live after we're done. Absolutely. Then that's when I would fold in half and I have my loop start. Okay. So now I've got this one on my needle. So this is how you do a loop start. Okay. You figure out where I'm not going to talk about starting the actual cross stitch where you start it or anything like that because we're almost out of time. But basically what you're going to do is you're going to go up into a hole. And I am going to preface this by saying when you make your X, okay, this is the part that's really important. When you guys make your X, it doesn't matter if you start at the top and go down, at the top and go down, at the bottom and go up. As long as you do it that way, every single time you make an X, okay? So what I do is I go bottom right to top left, and then I go bottom left to top right. And as long as I do that every single time, your threads are going to lay down in the correct order. They're all going to lay down the same way. And it's going to make your X's, your stitches look very neat. If your stitches are going all different ways, when you get done, you're going to be able to see it. Okay. So keeping that in mind, I'm going to come up in a hole. And I'm going to pull up, but I'm not going to pull all way through. I'm only going to pull so I have about that much left. Then I'm going to go into wow I can't see tonight. I'm going to go into my top right or whatever hole that you go into. I'm going to hook my loop over my needle so that it pulls through and as you pull up it'll create a knot. Super easy. Okay. Yeah. So usually I use two strands on 14, 16, 18, um, all the way up to 28. I think the 32, I'll probably maybe use one strand. I'll have to test it and see. That's something that's a little more advanced. 
Um, but usually the higher the count, the less strands that you use. Then to continue my stitch, I'm going to start in my hole, come back down, and I've made an X, okay? So let me try to get you lower so that you can see that again. To make your X, I'm going to make one right next to it. I'm going to find the hole, come up. Drop right down exactly where that corner is. You're going into that corner spot where that X already exists. Come down. Go over here. And come down and you've made another X. Okay. So that's the easy way to do it. That's how most people do it when they start. The other way that you can do it is called the sewing method. So if you're going to have a line of stitches, so let's say I need to make seven stitches all the way across. What I'm going to do is I'm only going to do half of it, and then I'm going to come back and do the other half, okay? So that's one, two. There's three, and I'm only going to do the first half. four, whoop, five, and actually five is good. Then I'm going to come back and do the other half of the X's. So you guys can see I only did half of them. So now we're going to go back and do the other half. So you just go back the other way and do the other half of the X. And you guys can tell I am not used to stitching in hand. And you have your X's. Okay. <laughs> you seriously want to learn how to cross stitch? <laughs> All right. I need to drink water. Mm -hmm. So. Yes, the parts of the X's have a name. I'm sure there's there's technical terms. It's a leg. If you only do half of it, it's called a tent stitch, you know, if you don't do the other half. But we're just doing the very, very basics today to get these guys started to at least be able to start on a project. Okay? So now, if I knew where my uh, seam ripper was, I would use it, but I don't know where my seam ripper is. So if you don't have a seam ripper and you find out that you made a mistake and you have to rip it out, that's what we call frogging, okay? So the way that you can do this is you can use your needle and you can unpick your floss as long as you haven't tied it off. So you just put your needle under the thread and pull it up. And pull it out and a lot of times your needle is actually easier because then you can reuse the floss if you can see it and you can't do that if you have seam ripped it out i can't see that guys sorry okay some okay. questions to be able to get you started you should at least be able to buy a cross stitch pattern and read it, figure out which type of floss that you need to get, which colors, and which count of fabric. Yeah, rip it, rip it, rip it. That's why it's called <laughs> frogging, because it sounds like a frog. 
Are there any questions at all about what I covered tonight? You guys, I'll consider doing a tutorial, like an actual tutorial, and cover all this again. Um, but there is so much that I could do a whole series. You will not go back to cross stitch again. No. <laughs> so Mindy's in denial. It's going to happen. We're just waiting on it. Does anybody have any questions over what we covered? Thank you so much to my other experienced cross stitchers that pitched in and helped me out. Because I'm still a new stitcher. I'm just pretty good at explaining things. You're not ashamed of pushing people down the cross. I'm not. Come on. There's plenty of room in the van. Jump in. We are just going right on along. So, um, those that should at least get you guys started. So, literally, if I got this pattern, let's say I found this pattern at Goodwill, and I decided, oh, you know what? This sounds fun. I'm going to try it. So, the first thing I'm going to do is look at this pattern. And I'm going to look on the back and I'm going to go, okay, so this was stitched on 28 count over two. That means you're going to go over one hole and skip one hole. Or if you are smart and you know over two on 28 is the same thing as over one on 14 count. So if you see a pattern and it says 28, but that's too high for you, you can... Do it on 14 count. If somebody says 36 and you don't, that's too high for you, do it on 18 count. 32 count, 16 count. Do you see what I'm saying? Is everybody following the math here? Those higher counts often break down into smaller counts. And you can use the smaller count. It might be a little bit bigger on your fabric when you're finished. But you can use smaller counts of fabric. Okay. So, and even frankly, I can do this on whatever kind of fabric I want. You just have to accommodate for the size. Um, and then I'm going to see that I need four colors. And it gives them a sampler threads, which is a brand. It gives the DMC colors and it gives the anchor colors. So if you don't have access to DMC threads, you might be able to get anchor. And frankly, I could go into my stash. I literally, this is what I did when I did this Texas one, this Lone Star Stitchers one. I got out my stash box. And I literally went, okay, what red do I want to use? Mm, that one's good. What blue do I want to use? Oh, that one looks good next to the red. I don't want to use white. Let's use cream. Oh, now I need a gold for the gold braid. Oh, that gold's good. Let's use that one. You guys, that's literally what I did. And there's nothing wrong with that. People adapt the patterns all the time. And most stitchers, they will tell you, you're the one stitching it. You're the one putting the work in. You're the one that needs to be happy with it when it's done. Okay? So, if you want to change the colors, change all the colors. Who's going to tell you you can't, right? Absolutely change the colors. So you don't have to go by what it says here. Those are recommendations. Um, then you're going to get your pattern out. And I would suggest, and I think somebody said it earlier too, is if you get a nice pattern like this, basically anything that's not a PDF pattern, you're going to want to make what's called a working copy, which means you're going to want to take this pattern, walk it over to the uh, printer and print a copy off and actually use that copy instead of the one that comes in here because you can resell these patterns as long as they're really nice. People don't want one that's been marked up and highlighted on and all that. They want a nice clean copy. So this one is a resell and I'm going to shoot you up here so that you can't see the pattern so much. See how it's all nice and clean? So, yeah, I, I bought this one off of a stash unloading group. So somebody else used it first 
and now I'm going to use it. Okay. It's like adapting a diamond painting kit with ABs or sparklers. Exactly. Absolutely. The two over one. Okay. So two over one. Basically, we're about 14 count eight. Again. So normally what you would do when you cross stitch is you're going to go into every single hole. Okay. So there's a hole. There's a hole. There's a hole and there's a hole. This is a lot easier when you can do, so I'm going to make this bigger so you can see it. And we're just going to pretend that it's correct, okay? So if you can imagine your cross stitch square looks like that, okay? You'd go into every single hole. So imagine each of these is a hole and that they were actually square, okay? When you go over one, that means you go into one hole. So you're covering one square on your cross stitch. So it's exactly what I was showing you when I was actually stitching. That was over one. Okay. If you need to go over two, which a lot of people do on their linen, what you're going to do is if this is your first hole, you're going to skip this one and go into this one. So instead of being four holes, you're going to cover nine holes. Does that make any sense? Over two is kind of hard to explain unless you can see it like on a diagram. Okay. Oh, that was my cow. That's not good. Yeah, if, if you're a lazy stitcher like I am, I like to fudge it and make it work if you make a mistake. Some people are very much perfectionists, and some people, sometimes you can't fudge it. Sometimes you messed up too bad. You cannot make it work. You're going to have to unpick it or frog it, unfortunately. Yep. Write this down. Like I said, I'll change the name and all of that kind of stuff. Um, Melissa B craft with me is the channel that is going next with diamond art addiction. Don't buy floss off Etsy. Yeah. Don't buy floss. Well, some floss off Etsy. You just have to know the cost. So if you're getting DMC floss, you guys, it should be 56 cents. If not cheaper, 56 cents. If you are going for your over dyed flosses, gentle arts, classic color work, some of those, they should be about two, between $2 and $2 and 50 cents. Um, if they're more expensive than that, then you're being ripped off. Just like every other craft, you have to know what things cost and what you should be paying for them. Okay. Um, if, you think it's too much and you're not sure, ask around. That's all I can tell you. But yeah, go to Joann's, go to Michael's. Hell, even Walmart has floss. You can get floss at Walmart. Not the whole line like you can other places. But yeah, um, firepoppies.com is another good one. They're a cross-stitch store. They'll get you your stuff in three days. And they'll ship it to you. Um, we are almost out of time. Yeah, you don't, I, I pretty much stick with DMC because I know it's good quality. Welcome back, Rebecca. No problem. Thank you so much for coming, Sherry. Um, yes, there is like, don't get floss on Amazon either. Unless you're getting like a box of DMC. Um, Valerie regrets not making a working copy. Yep. Yeah, and you're going to frog a lot when you first start. 
So what I did and what I recommended my sister do as well when she wanted to learn, but she wasn't sure she was really going to like it is I recommended that she start with a free pattern and something super easy. You can get Ada from Etsy. Yes. Um, again, just know how much it costs. Um, Oh, Ronnie got her last DMCs for 31 cents. She bought 174. Um, yeah, it just it just depends, you guys. Again, you have to be careful, just like everything else. Sometimes you're going to get burned. Um, I get my Ada cloth at Michael's. I've not had an issue, a single issue with it yet. Um, this stuff that I have here that I dyed. Those are going to be, those are from Joann's, and I've heard that those can be different counts vertically and horizontally, so we'll see. Oh, no, Catherine had to frog eight hours of work once. Oh, no. The person that sold you the Halloween pattern emailed you back already and sent you the correct DMC chart. She said it was a technical error. Good. There's two spots. Yeah. Okay, guys. So the other thing is that I wanted to talk about tonight is that um, we do have one spot open for the retreat. If you are interested in that, that'll be in October in Texas. Um, if you want more information, please contact me over on Facebook. My name is Marissa McCartney. I'm in almost all the diamond painting groups, so you should be able to um, find me over there. And I hope you guys enjoyed this. I will consider, you know, sitting down and doing like an actual series and all of that kind of stuff. If that is something that you guys are interested in, um, I'm always available for questions if I can answer them. Um, we do have, as you can tell, we have lots of experienced stitchers here. So please feel free to ask them as well. Yeah, start small. Start small, you guys. Don't, don't jump in like I did with my first one being letters from Hogwarts, which is a year long stitch along. Um, yeah, that was not a good choice. That was not a good life decision. So anyway, it is three minutes till you guys, if you, thank you so much for coming. If you have not already, please hit that thumbs up button and give me a thumbs up on this video. If you're not subscribed, please consider doing so. Um, and if you do do that, and I said, do do, there you go, Crashly. If you decide to do that, please don't forget to ring that cowbell because everybody needs more cowbell in their lives. And until I see you guys next time, happy stitching. Bye. <laughs>